I am finally back. Ebola is back, baby. Back from the dead because guess what? A certain platform has been taking down my fits. I'm pretty sure you can guess what has been happening. All I'm going to say is... <laughs> I've missed this, bro. I've actually missed this. And by the way, something new is coming really, really soon. In like a week, something new is actually going to be out. Something, something exciting, okay? I've been working on this for like months and I think you'll love it. So stay tuned for that. In about a week, I will be dropping something crazy. Just, I guess, yeah, just be ready for that. Anyway, let's quit the yapping and get straight into the content. What are we going to be doing today? We're going to be making graphical user interfaces with Batch. This is something that I was looking for, oh my God, forever because okay batch files they're fun but eventually you get tired of doing like the old menu um font thing whatever like yeah you still do it sometimes it's fun but you know what if you're a skid and you don't want to learn visual basic or c sharp but you still want to have buttons and have windows and have pop-ups and actually have a graphical user interface there are ways to do it with batch it's it's a crazy workaround i'm not even gonna lie whoever uh windows is making it really easy for us somehow it's low-key crazy like we're basically using c sharp but through batch it's i don't even know actually visual basic We'll get into it and then I'll show you how. And I'll show you some examples of my old tools that actually use the stuff that we're going to be talking about in this video. So let's get straight into it. All right, so we're going to be making a new batch file. Let's just make this a basic, I don't know, I'm just going to say. This is gonna be our file for today. We're just gonna call this GUI.bat. So just for those who didn't really understand what I explained by GUI, I probably popped some pictures up in the intro, but this is a CLI, which stands for command line interface. That means you have this little con host window right here, little cmd.exe. This is where you type stuff, this is where you see stuff, this is where all the magic happens. But GUIs, man, I love them. I have so many GUI tools. And um, I will say that the best ever IDE for that is Visual Studio, because you can use C sharp or visual basic to make basically anything you want with a gui and it's very easy you just literally drag over buttons drag over stuff for the gui and then you can just code like what happens when that button is pressed i will probably make a video on that later because um it is fun anyway for now we're sticking with batch so we got our little little window right here and how do we actually add stuff first you have to understand how we can actually execute powershell code blocks through um batch so for that we're gonna have to call powershell dash command and then over here quote and where is it where is it okay and finish the quote and over here you type any powershell command and it gets executed within your batch file so what we're going to be doing is using powershell to call different visual basic commands basically you'll see by the way i'll link the article below with all the different guis that we're going to be using so the first one i'm just going to copy paste it in is this long line oh they get even longer so uh better get ready but look it's calling powershell just like we had before and then we see this add type assembly name system.windows.forms if you use uh, visual basic or c sharp you've seen this and this is what you call the library you call for the graphical user interface and as you can see over here we have a drawing notify icon and here and this is what we'll change around some of the settings first we'll save this and i'll just show you what that looks like so so we're gonna run this and boom hello world this is called from a batch script i don't know about you but that's cool i've seen that before in um rats before if you know what i'm saying you know when you get a connection it gives you a little boom received connection from dot 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 if you get my drift but yeah this is a cool little notification and we can actually change this so let's let's change some of this let's customize it a little so right now icon is set to information and we can make it error it's gonna make it pop up as an error we can make it a warning so warning now it's a warning and yeah so that's pretty cool so now we can actually change the title and what it says so we can say like if you're prank you can actually use this in a prank you could be like windows defender eight trojans have been detected something like this this is some like 2002 like type prank whatever but Windows Defender, eight Trojans have been detected. So this is pretty cool. If you click on it, nothing happens. So that's the first one. You can make a notification pop up and you can change icon, text, title. So that's cool. You can use that in any sorts of parts of your batch file. So for example, let's say like, let's make this, let's make this a little file. We're gonna be like echo, wait, here. We're gonna, we're gonna make it a little menu. We're gonna say echo one is notification. Echo two is going to be, you'll see in a sec. But anyway, if, wait, hold up. Set dash p input equals. Yeah, we can just put. And then if input equals one, then we're going to go to Nodi. There we go. We're gonna have Nodi, and then this is going to be our little menu right here. Once we're done with this, we're gonna go to clear, go to menu. Boom. Perfect. Wait, actually, we should clear beforehand. 
All right, all right. So next one is going to be the most common thing, and that's just a message box. Okay, so the command for the message box is this right here. It's a little bit shorter. Ooh, this is cool. This is an example. Hello world notification. And it also displays like the button that we pressed. So, all right, all right, all right. So what can we change here? It's pretty similar to last time. So we have information right here. We can make it an error. And now it's going to show up as an error. We can uh, change the title and the text. And I don't know if we can change the button. Actually, wait, let me try. Oh, yeah, see. So there's there are actually custom buttons. Um, I guess you can ask ChatGPT because there actually are custom buttons that we can change, but I'm not trying to figure that out right now. You can ask ChatGPT. But yeah, you can change that and have like multiple buttons. Actually, you can have like the ignore, abort, retry. You can have like, okay, cancel, blah, 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 all that jazz. And um, and like always, we can switch the title and the text. So yeah, I'm just going to copy this so I don't have to stress about that. And we're going to make this MSG box. Boom probably clearing a little unnecessarily but that's fine you know we're just just being safe here all right here wait this was okay and we can make this like actually let's make all of them like something related to defender we can be like actually windows upgrading upgrading from windows 10 to windows 11 dot 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 okay wait let's see what this looks like now if input is equal to two we're gonna go to message box i don't even know if this input works i it probably doesn't here wait message box boom all right we're gonna and we're choosing the message box okay oh whoa, 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 whoa. they're flipped the error actually doesn't look that good let's make it information you know information and we have to switch these two here we go we have windows and we have a little message okay let's see what this looks like man if i saw this i would start like i would probably die of a heart attack man to be honest i would rather have the freaking mems trojan ransomware sonic.exe than see this on my screen okay but on a real note message box is actually useful because you can use that as an input instead of having like this for example you can have like a okay no or okay cancel and uh basically use i'm pretty sure you can use air level yeah i think so i think you can use air level to actually go off of what button the user clicked so that's cool okay so the article actually says there okay wow okay so it just shows us how it is doing the what's it called the choice the option so it's basically the same command except now it's outputting it to a temporary file and then yeah i guess using it and then we can delete this one right so let's see what this looks like so so we have hello, we can do yes or no. If we do no, it doesn't output anything. And if we do yes, then it says, okay, for a second here on the console, it uh, showed yes, like echo clicked yes. So yeah, wait, what actually did they do for the yes or no? So we have windows, okay. Oh, okay, it's just yes, no. Okay, this is how it is. So it's probably like, okay, cancel or something like this. Uh, okay, yeah, this isn't gonna work, but I'm, wait, let me just try this out actually, for, just for fun. Yeah. Oh, see, boom. Power of guessing. We see, okay, cancel. So yeah, stuff like that. So this saves it to a temporary file and then saves it into a variable and we check it. So you can use that. All right. So this next one is actually pretty interesting. I used to use this one all the time. This one's cool. And this one's going to be a input, input box. Let's add the little option. Input box. If it equals three, go to all right so i'm just gonna copy paste what the article has because this one's pretty long cls boom cls go to menu all right let's check this out we're choosing the input box enter your name ebola you have entered ebola oh see we're combining the input box and the message box okay that's cool that's actually cool and you can make it ask anything you can just you can just switch around the words oh wow look look how short this one is i was the notification the simplest but the longest but this one is literally like three times shorter enter your name this is the title then it uses the message box so that's actually pretty cool okay so we've reached a certain point and now custom gui elements all the above demonstrations use pre-built ui elements even though you need to build custom dialog boxes it is possible to implement with partial commands because it offers bindings to .NET methods. Anything accomplished with .NET could also be implemented in a batch script via PowerShell code blocks using this approach. That's what we did. Moreover, it is possible to use this approach to display native GUI components and notifications via any programming language as I did by using C++ for the, some project. The above script will show a window with a label. Likewise, any custom GUI element can be added to your Windows batch files by calling required methods from the .NET framework. So wow, you can actually have a window. Like this is GUI, GUI. This is an actual window. But look how long this is this is very long just for like one label so uh, i guess we're gonna paste this in anyway here i'm gonna add it and this is going to be um what should we call it i guess window stop 
capitalizing don't okay there we go all right let's run this see the window wow you can resize it you can minimize it come back oh what the hell i have so many command prompt windows average day in the life of ebola man <laughs> you just have like 10 cmd windows open okay boom you can minimize it shows up as powershell you can full screen it resize like this is in like an actual window and close it so that's damn that's pretty cool damn imagine if for a future video <gasps> I just realized, I just realized what the hell. Okay, so look, after every semicolon, this is like a line of um code, right? So look, blah, 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 I type semicolon. And now this is the next line of code, semicolon, this semicolon, right? Yeah, obviously. Now we can actually just code something in Visual Basic or like in .NET and then just put the semicolons before it and actually just paste it in here and, and have a GUI like easily without having to just type like this and figure this out. Oh my God, I'm actually a genius. No, I'm not a genius. Anyone who's not a skid probably knew that. I want to try that. I want to try that. Okay, in the future, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to challenge myself to actually make like a complicated tool, like a cool tool with a GUI with like the full window with like buttons and stuff, labels and make it all in batch. I don't know how long this is going to take me. I don't know when I'm going to do this. Probably during the winter when there is uh, no sun out and I can sit in my room all day and just like rot on my computer and somehow make that. So I don't know, but that's coming soon. That's coming soon. So stay tuned. Wait, I don't know about soon actually, but it's coming someday. There is a minor issue with this method. This approach may slow down your batch files a bit because each GUI element, such as a parent window or notification will create a separate process. However, that slowness can be ignored with the computation power of modern computers. Oof, making a complicated GUI, every small little function is going to be its own process. So I might have to upgrade my memory <laughs> and my CPU too, actually. But um, we'll see. Okay, so now we have this. I'm going to throw the article in the description so you can actually just copy paste yourself. And now I actually want to show you how I used this article like two years ago in some of my old tools. So as some of you have seen, I have this folder with a bunch of old files and and we're looking for recon v2 here we go so recon v2 i'm gonna have to blur out some of what it shows because it's personal personal information but anyway so yeah we have all this this is basically like the best ip puller that you could ever have i was charging like 250 for this kids were buying it left and right everyone wanted their hands on recon v2 this was the shit ladies and gentlemen so this was the shit i'm not even joking people were going crazy over this but you know it's getting dropped soon okay i need to focus up so we can uh do all these different features which i went over in this video right here where I was going through my old files. Now we're just going to be scanning my network for IP addresses and it gives us a little prompt, a little GUI. So watch this. Are you sure you want to scan Bell 157? That's my network. We're going to go yes. Checking for internet. What if I found SID? So yeah, that was the message box. I didn't only use GUI in Recon V2. I also used it in RDP Lloyd.bat. So it was basically RDP exploit, but it, it was, it didn't really work. But um, 2002, 05, this was a while ago. So let's run this. Whoa, boom. Input box straight off the bat. Enter target's IP address. Man, wait, should I boot up my VM for this? Yeah, let's do that actually. While we're waiting for that, let me show off this USB. This USB stick is so cool. You know, some people thought it was a vape. This how messed up our generation is these days. I'd be holding just a USB stick and these fellas think that it's a vape. Okay, okay, we got the Windows, we got the Windows VM. Oh, by the way, does anyone know how the hell I have two user accounts? Like, man, these VMs are cooked. I don't even know how the hell some of this stuff be working, but anyway, virtual machine with RDP enabled. Um, Let me just figure out the IP. My CPU started spinning like five times faster. The fans are going crazy right now. Let me just get the IP real quick. 2.27. Oh, wait, this actually... Bro, we could have used the Recon V2 to just scan the network. That would have been cool, you know? Okay, so let's go. Enter target's IP address. Boom. 192.168.2.27. Okay. Starting remote connection to... Okay. The logon attempt failed. Wow, so much for the RDP exploit, right? It was almost there. I was so close. I was so close to making a groundbreaking remote access hack. Shh. Don't tell YouTube, though. I don't want them to take this video down. But basically, I was cooking back then. I was, I was really cooking, but... Not all the way, but yeah, uh, I guess we're just going to put in the password since the credentials didn't work and remote desktop connection. Boom. Bang, 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 bang. Now we're controlling my VM through here. So that's pretty cool. I'm going to give my CPU a little break. And that is it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed. This is knowledge that I wish I had earlier because GUIs are sick. GUIs and batch files, that's literally, those are my two favorite things in this world. And putting them together, I was just so happy. Imagine if in the future, there's actually this ID. It's like Visual Studio, except instead of like C Sharp, it's batch. Imagine if you can have like a full, okay, I'm such a skid. Oh my God. <laughs> anyway, anyway, I hope you got some valuable information from this video and enjoyed it. I'm finally happy to be back. Like we're literally back. Let's go next week. Dropping something crazy beyond the outlook for that. It includes a lot of stuff, like just so much, so much stuff, so much stuff, but I'm giving it a surprise for now, but just stay tuned. Be ready for that. Like sub, join my community if you want, and I will see you next time.
peace.